Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hani Tamim. Uh, I will be uh, uh, delivering this, uh, uh, this course. It's called Research Methodology and Biostatistics. Um, I, uh, I have a BS in Biology uh, from the American University of Beirut. I have a Master's in Public Health, uh, mainly in Epidemiology and Biostatistics from Emory University from the States. And I have a PhD in uh, Epidemiology and Biostatistics from uh, McGill University. Uh, I'm an associate professor working uh, uh, at uh, King Saud uh, Ben Abdelaziz University for Health Sciences in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Um, and uh, I will be uh, uh, summarizing the whole research process from the very beginning to the very end uh, in, in this uh, series of uh, lectures. Before I start uh, talking about uh, specific uh, uh, topics in, in research, I would like to uh, highlight the importance of research and the importance of uh, uh, research projects and why do we deliver and why do we do conduct uh, such research projects. Um, I'm, I'm positive that all of you have uh, read articles before in the medical uh, literature and uh, you have downloaded articles and you've read them and you have incorporated them into your practice and so on. But I would like to uh, dissect a little bit uh, uh, the following article and to highlight the important uh, uh, things that we have to look for in any uh, article published in the uh, medical literature. Um, as an example, I will take this article or this paper. It's called uh, Preoperative Hematocrit Levels and Postoperative Outcomes in Older Patients Undergoing Non-Cardiac Surgery. This paper was published in JAMA and uh, uh, these are the co-authors. So apart from the uh, clinical aspect of the paper, I would like to highlight or address uh, the different common uh, uh, parts that are included in any uh, paper, such as the title, the authors, the journal, the publication, the abstract, and so on and so forth. So I will take each one uh, by itself. So, uh, first of all, the title, uh, in this case, Preoperative Hematocrit Levels and Postoperative Outcomes in Older Patients Undergoing Non-Cardiac Surgery. Uh, there are so many things that we have to look for in an article, uh, in the title of the article more specifically. In other words, uh, the first screening point for your literature review is the title. In other words, when you are looking uh, for a certain topic or articles published in a certain topic, the first thing you screen or you scan through is the title. When you are doing a search, you look at the title and according to the title you decide whether this paper or this manuscript is relevant to what you are looking for or not. If it is, then you will get the article and you will read it and so on and so forth. And if it is not, you will disregard it. This is why the title is very important in any paper for the, uh, uh, for the physician to look for and to understand what are the hidden messages behind the title. Uh, the title usually should summarize the whole research project. In other words, it should include information about the objective or uh, uh, the methodology or even the results. In other words, uh, it has to have enough information in very few number of words that summarize or give a clear idea about what the project was about. Sometimes, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the methodology is included, such as, uh, for example, if it was preoperative hematocrit levels and postoperative outcomes, a clinical trial. They might put the methodology or the study design that they have carried out in the title, uh, or uh, a meta-analysis of this and that, or uh, a cohort study of so and so. So the methodology could be included in the title, uh, the objective, uh, which, is, uh, which in, case in this case is about uh, preoperative hematocrit levels and postoperative outcomes. So basically here, they are giving you the uh, exposure, which is the preoperative hematocrit levels, and the outcome, which is uh, the postoperative outcomes in terms of uh, mortality and so on. And uh, the study population they studied, in this case it is uh, older patients undergoing non-cardiac surgery. In other words, the bottom line is that the, uh, the title is very important and it summarizes the whole project. The second thing that you should look for in an article is the publication or the reference. In this case, it is the JAMA. JAMA is the Journal of American Medical Association, uh, and it's one of the best uh, uh, journals in the medical field. Uh, the year is 2007. 
297 is the volume. 2481 to 2488 is the uh, pages, the, the, the pages of the paper. So basically, this is a way to identify the article in terms of where is it published, when is it published, and the volume of its publication and the uh, number of pages. Now, is it important for us to look for this? Absolutely, yes. Uh, why? Because there are two main things that I should look for in a, a reference. The first one is the journal name, and the second one is the year of publication. The journal name is, uh, 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 is very important because there are so many different journals in the medical field. From the, very, from the top journals like JAMA, Lancet, New England Journal of Medicine, to the very uh, uh, low uh, uh, in, uh, uh, quality type of uh, journals. So basically, we have something called impact factor. An impact factor, I will talk about it by the end of this course, but an impact factor is a score, a scoring system for the journal to, in, to identify or to give information about how important, how good, uh, or what is the quality of this journal. Uh, and for you as a reader, it's very important for you to identify where was this paper published. Because if it's published in JAMA, for example, you can make sure that it is of good quality and so on and so forth. The second year is the, uh, uh, or the second thing that you should uh, 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 notice or uh, uh, highlight is the year of publication. Because any uh, topic in the medical literature it depends on the year, right? So the uh, medical information in uh, 1970 is very much different than the medical information in 2011. So all the information that we have or the advances in uh, uh, the medical field is dependent on the time. So you have to identify that this study was done when? In this case, it was done in 2007. In some cases, you might want to look for papers that are published more recently, like in 2010, 2011, and so on, uh, not for papers that were published earlier on. So the bottom line is that the reference is very important. You have to look for the year and for the journal in which it's published. The, uh, the author affiliations. In this case, uh, uh, it is, uh, they put the author affiliations and they put, for example, uh, the departments and the universities and the countries where the study was done and so on and so forth. I will not go over the whole thing. Uh, and they put information about the corresponding author in this case, it is Dr. Wen Chi, uh, and the, the, the address, and of course, the email. It's very important for, uh, for you to look or identify where was this study uh, carried out. Because in certain fields, there might be some universities or some countries or some uh, institutions that are pioneers in this area. So you might understand or so you might get something about uh, how good the research is from the location where it was carried out. Uh, so it's very important for you to identify that. At the same time, the corresponding author is the person who is responsible for correspondence between people and the authors. In other words, uh, for example, if you would like to do something similar to this study and uh, you would like to communicate with those people who carried out this study, the corresponding author is the best person to do that. Why? Because he or she are the ones who are delegated by the other co-authors to communicate with, uh, with people. So you have the email, you can write an email to this uh, uh, author and ask for details about the study, ask about questionnaires that were used, and so on and so forth. So again, it's very important to look at the author affiliation. Now, of course, the abstract is also very important. It is the second uh, screening point for you when you are doing a literature search. In other words, uh, uh, when you look at the title and you decide that this is an important uh, uh, topic and it is relevant to what I'm doing, this is where you go to the second level, which is the abstract. And so what's the, what's the abstract? The abstract is, again, a detailed summary of ho the whole project. In other words, uh, the background information should be mentioned in the abstract. In other words, why is it important to do such a study in, in this field? Why is it important, the background? The objective, which means uh, what do you want to do in this study? So what was done in that study? The design, how was the study carried out? In other words, what did they do? They, did they prospective, retrospective? And all these terms, I will go over them uh, 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 during this course. Uh, 
the outcomes, what did you look for, or what did the author look for, and of course the results, what did they find? So what are the main findings of the paper, and eventually the conclusions? So what did the authors conclude after doing the whole research project? Now, sometimes uh, 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 clinicians look at the conclusion. Some other people might look at the methodology and the results, and so on. To me, it's very important for you to read the whole abstract. It's very important because you cannot get a full picture about the project, about the paper, unless you go over the whole thing. So the objective of the study has to be related to the methodology, has to be related to the results, and has to be related to the conclusion. So as if it is a full story. If you read the conclusion of the story, you'll not be able to get the whole thing. You have to read from the beginning to the end to be able to make sense of what was the story about. In this case, uh, uh, each one of these uh, uh, give a certain information, and throughout this course, we will be uh, discussing the different uh, uh, items of this uh, abstract. The introduction uh, is basically uh, where, he, where the person introduced the topic, right? I will not go over the uh, specific uh, um, uh, introduction for this paper, but I just want to highlight that the background information about what is known in the field is very important. Any research paper has to identify a gap, of, uh, a gap in knowledge. What do we mean by gap in knowledge? In other words, if everything is known about this topic, there is no need for a new publication or a new paper or a new project. So, unless there is something missing, the paper is not justified. And how do you justify a paper? By identifying what is known and what is unknown. So, what is known and what's unknown should be identified in the introduction. So, the author or you, when you do a research project in the future, you have to identify what is known about this topic and what is missing to justify the existence or the con uh, conducting your, your research project. Now, of course, it depends on different fields. Some fields ha are, are very uh, well studied, and there is a lot of literature, and this is more challenging where you have to put all the literature together in a summarized, clear way so that you tell the reader what is done in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in this field. But the important thing is the gap in knowledge as I discussed. The second thing that's important in the introduction is the objective. The objective is the reason why you are doing the study. In other words, in this case, uh, they say the purpose of the current study is to evaluate uh, the prevalence of preoperative anemia and uh, polycystemia and their effects on 30-day postoperative outcomes in a national cohort of older veterans undergoing major non-cardiac surgery. So whenever you read this objective, you should be able to understand what are these people doing and on what uh, type of population and so on and so forth. So the last sentence in the introduction of any paper should be the objectives of the study. You look for the last sentence and you should find the objectives or the aims or the reasons why this study is carried out. Now, uh, should the objectives be very general or very uh, uh, specific? They should be specific. Right? So this is why the reader should be able to really clearly, specifically understand what was uh, the objective of that study. The second important thing in a paper is the methods. Now, I would know that most clinicians do not really look at uh, the methods section in details. But, and this is what I'm trying to do in this uh, course, is to highlight for you is, uh, uh, that the methods of the paper or the project is very important. The whole validity, the whole importance of the paper is decided not on the results. It depends on the methods of the study. How did this people, how did these people do the study? What determines whether it was a good study or a bad study? So this is why the methodology is, or the method section is uh, uh, very important. And basically, uh, for example here, uh, they, uh, they uh, uh, mention what was the study design. So, they say we conducted a retrospective cohort study using blah, 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 blah. So in other words, 
Uh, they mention what is the study design, and we have so many different study designs, not many, but we have maybe five or six uh, study designs, and I will go over them in details. But the authors have to specify the type of the study that they have carried out in this uh, publication, uh, the underlying population, in other words, among whom did they carry out this study design, uh, the inclusion-exclusion criteria, wh uh, who did they include, into the study and who did they exclude and all of these we will cover them uh, later. Uh, the study sample is where they mentioned the uh, uh, inclusion uh, exclusion and the exposure information. In this case they mentioned the preoperative hematocrit values. How did they measure the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the variable that they are looking for as an exposure? Because in this case they were looking at hematocrit values in relation to outcomes. So uh, they have to be very clear about how did they measure the hematocrit level and how did they divide it and so on and so forth. And of course the outcomes. The outcomes in this case uh, were uh, uh, mortality and you might have primary outcome and secondary outcomes, right? In other words, any research project has to have one topic or one objective in mind, primary objective, but they might have different secondary objectives. So the primary outcome, we should have only one primary outcome, but we might have secondary outcomes. So you can look for, uh, uh, for example, quality of life. You can look for uh, uh, satisfaction. You can look for so many different things, but there should be only one primary outcome. And of course, in any methodology section, you should have the statistical analysis. And I'm pretty much sure that most of you do not look at the statistical analysis section, but I would like to highlight that uh, the statistical analysis section is very important for you uh, to understand what has been done. And by the end of the course, when I talk about statistics, you should be able to further understand uh, most of these topics that are mentioned here. Now, the results is where uh, the authors uh, summarize their findings. So, so far, we have talked about the introduction, the background, what's known, what's the gap, the objective, what needs to be done, the methodology, how was it done, and now the results, what was found. So the results section is very important for you as a reader and as a researcher uh, to identify what, uh, what was found. The first thing that you would like to highlight in, uh, in, uh, 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 or to understand from the paper is a descriptive or a description about the sample. So how many patients were included, how old are they, what was their distribution in terms of gender and disease, uh, 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 underlying diseases, and so on and so forth. So baseline characteristics is where you summarize uh, or you uh, read about the uh, information of the sample. Evaluation of the conventional definitions, in other words, in this case,